Hey, Shalom, Israel, Shalom, Shalom. You know, first and foremost, I want to give all honor and glory to Yahweh by Hashimi Hawashai. And this video is going into, um, what is live. This live is going into, man, whoop your kids. Don't be scared to whoop your kids. Hey, the reason why the generation is, the reason why my generation is the probably the wickedest generation ever to walk the face of the earth, because the parents want to be the kids' friends. The parents want to be the kids' friends. Now nah, the parents don't want to whoop the kids. So now let Tay Tay growing up, them yeah, being a, a a murderer, and then uh, Shaniqua gr growing up trying to uh them yeah, be on a strip pole because they wasn't whooped. It wasn't discipline. That's why a lot of these kids bad man. Little Tay Tay running around in the hood with his diaper falling off with the snotty nose. I always say this: it's all, the the bad ones always be the ones with the snotty nose. They say they the little baby kid, they always have a snotty nose, peasy hair. You know what I'm saying? The parents don't discipline, they bad. And you have other people telling them, hey, your, hey, your kid did this, and the parents don't want to listen. They're in denial. They think they kid, they know their kids bad. They know their kids bad as hell. Hey, a lot of these parents know they be knowing their kids bad as hell. But when somebody else tell them, they don't want to hear it. But they, they, they you know. Just take heed. They don't want to take heed when somebody else tell them. They don't want to hear it. They already know they kid bad. But they don't want nobody else to tell them that they kid's bad. You didn't have our generation be calling uh uh the sisters be calling their mama uh, a girl. Hey girl, you heard about this? Girl, that's your mom. Talking on the phone, um, hey, hey, uh, hey girl, you, you seen that picture? Hey, girl, let me tell you. The mama listening. What, girl? What going on? That's wicked, bro. Like I say, a lot of these parents want to be their kids' friends. A lot of these parents are scared to tell their kids no. It's, a lot of these parents scared of their kids. Oh, she might not want to talk to me no more. She might not want to come around no more. She might not post me on Instagram no more. And a lot of these parents are terrible, bro. A lot of these parents are terrible, man. You know, the dad and the dad, that's a curse. You know, the dad in the household, man. The, hey, a lot of these women, I'm going to keep it a book. Keep it a stat. A lot of these women, think about it. A lot of these, because it's all about, it's all about um, order. The man in the household, he's either dead, either in jail, or he just didn't want nothing to do with the mama no more, the kids, so he just left. You know, so a lot of women... Say it's our fault, you know what I'm saying? Which it is in a, at a, at a, in a sense, it's our fault. But think about it. When you think about it on this level, who are raising these kids? The women. The women are raising these kids. You had effeminate Jake, you know the brother effeminate. He uh, at a young age, he trying to he, he put on his mama heels. You got the dang uh uh the sister. I mean, the, the little sister, the, her daughter, dressing like her. You know what I'm saying? Trying to be like her. Talking like her. Are already twerking at the age of four. But she can't say her She can't talk. But she twerking. You know what I'm saying? But that, that what goes on, bro. That what goes on because these kids are bad because the parents ain't whooping them. The, 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 parent, the, dad and then the dad mainly not in the crib to discipline them. So he left them to the mom. And the mom ain't doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? She mainly at work. You know what I'm saying? She come home, kind of tired, go to sleep, leave the kids up. They bad. They sneaking out, still in her car, going to who nowhere. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it's, it needs to be ordered. But it starts off, you can't wait till they get older. Because when they get older, it's over with. It's GG's. It's over with. You have to discipline them at a young age, man. At a young age, bro. You know what I'm saying? So let me get that. This, this proverb chapter 29 and verse 15. The rod and reproof giveth wisdom, but a child left to himself bring his mother to shame. Hey, so the, the Bible said the rod and reproof. When you whoop, whoop them. What? At an age, I wouldn't say at a young age, you can, might, you can, you can pop them. I wouldn't say whoop them, but you can pop them at a young age. You can reproof them, tell them when they're doing wrong. Because you got to think about it, they're a child. A child don't know right from wrong unless you tell them. Hey, a child will touch a spider. I try to put their hand in fire unless you tell them don't do that. If you don't tell them nothing, they're not gonna know. So a lot of these, a lot of our children grow up not knowing right from wrong. 
because they wasn't taught at a young age what right, what right and wrong from. I mean, they never they, was, they wasn't taught at a young age what's right and what's wrong. So a lot of our kids grow up not knowing nothing, not knowing that I can't do this. I'm gonna get in trouble for this. That's why a lot of our brothers, they felons. They rob stores. You know what I'm saying? They shoot people. They steal because they think they can do that. They think they can do that stuff and not get in trouble because when they were younger, they did that, all that stuff. They stole candy from out their um, mama cookie jar. I mean, they stole they stole cookies out the cookie jar. All they got was a, a look, don't do that no more. <laughs> that brother stole them cookies. They think it's a joke. That brother stole them cookies out the cookie jar. So now he think it's okay. I ain't get in trouble for it. I grew up doing this stuff. All I got was somebody saying, don't do it or made a joke out of it. So now I get older, I do a real crime. I then do a burglary. I rob a bank. You know what I'm saying? Now he getting, they ain't about 20, 25 years. Now he looking crazy. Like, what's going on? He waiting on his mom's to bail him out. She can't bail him out. She can't do nothing about it. So now he kind of looking crazy. Like, dang, what's going on? All this time, when I was younger, I wasn't getting disciplined. I was doing this stuff and I was okay. I wasn't getting in trouble. Now they get to the point, they get older and start doing real, real felon crimes. Now they stuck. Now they crying because... You know, they wasn't disciplined at a young age. They wasn't taught. And hey, you don't do that. If you do that, you, you gonna, I'm going to whoop you. You know, straight up, I'm going to whoop you. Take your belt out. They wasn't. A lot of these generations don't even know. Hey, a lot of our generation don't even know what whoopings is. They don't even know what whoopings is, bro. They never got a whooping in their life. Because half of the parents young enough. They young. Parent. Hey, women and brothers having babies at 15 years old. 14 years old, bro. So it's like a child raising a child. They're not going to whoop them. They want to be their friend. They young too. You know what I'm saying? They're not worried about whooping their child. They're not worried about being an adult because they're not an adult. They still young. They just had a baby. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and so the Bible said, hey man, whoop your child, man. It says, but a child left to himself bring his mother to shame. So the Bible said, if you leave a child by himself, meaning, hey, you let him do whatever he want to do. He come in the house anytime. He come in the house. He dead, uh, uh, 12, 13 years old, coming in the house at 1 o'clock in the morning. You leaving him to himself. You don't even know what he did. You don't even know when he come in the house. You always going out the house. You leaving him home by himself. You always going somewhere. He going oh, he gonna to come with, he gonna come up with something wicked. You leaving him by himself. He going to call a girl over. 10 years old, already calling girls to come over. Because he bored. He by himself. You living by himself. No, the sister gonna call up that dude to come through the window. Hey, my mama gone. Hey, come through the window. Come through the front door. You can come through the front door. My mom's gone. He Jake coming over. You don't know how old he is. She could be 12 years old. He could be down 18 years old. But you don't know because you left him alone. So they gonna be bad. Most of all the bad kids are left alone. No parents, no guidance, bro. So this Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 15. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Yes, like I was saying, foolishness is bound in their heart, which is their mind, because they don't, they don't know right and wrong unless you tell them. They born with that. You know what I'm saying? You have to correct them. You being their parent, you have to correct them and show them right and wrong. Because if you not, and you lead them by themselves, somebody else is going to show them what's right and wrong. It's not going to be good. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. So that rod of correction, that belt, that wet rag, that extension cord. <laughs> hey, Grandma was one playing back then. They hit you with anything. They make you go pick a switch off the tree, right? Hey, come back with the swap. Come back with the smallest switch, right? They gonna tell you go pick another one. They want you to pick the biggest switch. They'll pop you with a switch. You got whoops all on your arm. You know what I'm saying? You crying. I remember mean, one time, me and my cousin, uh, <laughs> me and my cousin, right, we were young, we had to be about, man, about 10, 11, but we was writing cuss words, right, we was writing cuss words, cussing, writing them in a box, right, we had pass it to each other, write another cuss word, pass it to each other, right, and we would always put it under our bed, or put it, I, I always leave a box, it was like a shoe box, I always leave a box under my bed, right, so when he come back again, we'll do it again. That's something we was doing. Like, I don't know what got us into that. You know what I'm saying? So one time he came over. Because we were learning new cuss words. So we always used to write the new cuss words that we learned. So came home, right? With my, with my cousin. I'm like, yeah, all right. I'm going to show him I learned this. He ain't know nothing about this word I heard. 
kind of heard it from movies, music, you know what I'm saying? I go into the bed, right? The box, gone. Heart drop. I'm thinking, dang. Kind of starts, kind of start breathing real fast. My dad come in the room. We look at him. He shut the door. All I see is a belt in his hand. Then he had a belt in his hand. Then I think he went back. It went and got the box. I'm kind of like, I'm already knowing, bro. It's over with. Cause you finna have to go home. I'm finna get my ass whooped. Came in. I didn't think my mom came in with him the second time. Came in with the box. He opened it up the box. He said, So who wrote this? My cousin said, My cousin said what all he wrote. My dad was just trying to see what I wrote. My cousin said what he wrote. He asked me what all you wrote. So I can't even I ain't have time to I didn't even have time to say what I wrote. I said, I, I tried to point out, I say what I wrote. He started whooping me, bro. Start whooping me in front of my cousin. Whooping me. Whooping me. Whooping me. I'm like, Cud laughing at me. I'm getting whooped. I'm like, Cud, I'm looking at him. trying to. I want him to help me. He, he, he laughing at me. I'm getting whooped. He going crazy. Pop, pop, pop. You know what I'm saying? Then took my cousin home like I knew. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I always remember that. You know what I'm saying? I gotta, got my butt. Well, I stay, I have to stay in the room, man. But, hey, that's love, though, bro. At then, I'm thinking, like, bro, they don't like me. He whooped me this hard. He got to hate me. And there's no way he whooped me this hard. Got whoops on my arm. You know what I'm saying? Butt hurting. I mean, one time I was finna get a whooping. I think something that happened at school. I mean, one time I was finna get a whooping. I tried to put on three or four underwear. I know my, my, my dad still talk about it to this day. I tried to put on three or four underwear, bro. Like, I, heard, I heard that help. People told me at school, hey, that help. I put three, put on three or four underwear. You know what I'm saying? But it's the one time, no, 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 my mom was whooping me, my mom was whooping me, it was my mom whooping me, but my dad, my mom ended up, told my dad about the story, and he always talked to me about it, I think it was my mom whooping me, cause I got in trouble at school, it was, it was this one time I decided, I decided to put on three or four underwear, the time I decided to do that is the time she tell me to strip butt naked, take all your clothes off, cause I, I been getting in trouble at school, you know, it wasn't like, it wasn't the first time the teacher, you know, had to email my mom, call Call her. And I was like in sixth grade though. You know what I'm saying? I, I was in sixth grade, bro. So the time she tell me to take my underwall, I'm like, dang. She ain't never told me to do that. But the, but the time I decided to put on three or four underwear, it's the time my mom gonna tell me to take off your whole clothes, strip butt naked. I'm gonna tear your butt up. I'll take my I'll take my I'll take my <laughs> I'm I'm looking at it like hopefully. She forgive me. I'm looking at her kind of sad. She ain't going for it. Man, take take no jaws off. I take my I, I, I take my box. I mean, I take my shorts off. Then I take my underwear off. Then I keep dropping them. Then I keep dropping them again. I kind of heard her laugh though, but she didn't want me to see her. She started laughing, but she turned her face like she turned her face like this. She didn't want me to see her laugh. Then she turned back with a straight face. I'm like, dang. You know what I'm saying? Whoop my butt. You know what I'm saying? Whoop me. Whoop me. Whoop me. You know, had me, had me in this kind of looking sad, kind of stuck. I couldn't move, whips all on me. But that's love, though, man. That's love because if you don't whoop your child, bro, they're not going to know what's right and wrong. They're going to grow up and be wicked and dangerous, bro. They're going to be like a menace to society, bro. It's going to be, it's going to be a menace to society, bro. So, you know what I'm saying? Whoop your child, though. You know what I'm saying? There's plenty more. I ain't get whooped that much, but... I got whooped that much, you know. So I remember, I remember like it was crazy stuff, man. Crazy stuff I used to do that get me in trouble every time, bro. You know what I'm saying? Whoopings, like it was, it was wild. You know, wet rag. But my grandma used to hit me with a wet rag, but it wasn't like no whooping wet rag. She did about three or four times with a wet rag. I think it was my one of my grandma used to do that, bro. But it went like it, it, it hurt though. They weren't playing with that wet rag. One cousin, cousin used to tell me took a shower. They are busting up. They are busting up as soon as you get done taking taking a shower. You wet. Hit you. That's gonna hurt, bro. But it's all it's all love, bro. That's what a so-called white man um try to stop you um from whooping your child, man. They try to get the parents can call the, the parents can call on you. 
you can go to jail for that for whooping your child now. They want you to stop whooping your child so your child can be wicked like their child. They want your child to shoot up school like their child. They want your ch- they want they they want your child to call uh the cuss out they uh the cuss out uh they want your child to cuss you out like they child cuss them out. So they want you to stop whooping your child. That's wicked, bro. You need to whoop your child, bro. Your child need to grow. Your child shouldn't grow up without having at least. I can't put a number on it, but you supposed to whoop your child, bro. He put, it ain't no way he supposed to grow up without getting at least no whooping or no pop or no or no dis or saying no. You do this or getting grounded or stay in the house. It ain't no way he should grow up without nothing going on like that. No way. No way. So I got uh, Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 13 through 14. Withhold not correction. This is a commandment. This is one of the commandments in the Bible. Proverbs 23 and 14, I mean 13 through 14. Withhold not correction from thy child. If thou beat him with the sword, he shall not die. So the Lord said, don't hold correction from your child. If you beat him with the, the rod, he's not going to die. Stop being scary. Or I might hit him too hard. I might break his arm. He's not gonna break his arm. But don't go overboard now. Don't go don't hang him up, up. Don't hang him upside down with his feet up. His blood going through his head. You whooping him like that. He kind of twisting. He turning around like a pit, like a uh, pinata. That's off. Don't get that hard now. But the belt though. Use the belt. You're not gonna kill him. Just because he got whips on his arm, it's not going to kill him. That's better than him killing somebody. Them whips on his arm, him receiving that butt whooping is better than him growing up being a, a menace to society. It's better than that. Don't spare your child, man. He do something crazy. Tell him straight up. Hey, I already see him taking the belt off. They should already know when you undo that belt. <sighs> they should already drop their pants. They already know what's coming. For real. Um... He shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shall deliver his soul from hell. So you're going to deliver his soul from hell, bro, when you beat him with that rod. He's going to grow up and always. He's going to grow up be like, it's like you. He's going to grow up, you know what I'm saying, knowing right and wrong. So he's going to know I can't do this. If I do that, this going to happen. He's going to know you're going to deliver his soul, bro. He's not going he not, he not to do nothing crazy. Or have nothing crazy happen to him. This Proverbs chapter 13 verse 24. He that spareth his rod hateth his son. So the Lord said, if you spare the rod, bro. If you know your child did something crazy and you post tear his butt up. Little Ray Ray. Little Ray Ray done then. Little Ray Ray done came in and then took your debit card and spent. Then went crazy. Went to the Little Tay Tay came, took your debit card. Spent bank with your debit card. You said, you said, baby, did you spend money on my card? He tell you to shut up. You part the, and you and you just look there and look at him and be like, why you always treat me like this, Tay Tay? He ten years old. You talking to him? Why you always treat me like this, Tay Tay? All I done for you, Tay Tay. Why you gonna treat me like this, Tay Tay? Tay Tay looking at you. He ready. To, he ready to do it again. Cause he looking and saying, oh, she ain't doing nothing to me. But if, if, if Lil Tay Tay uh, took money off your debit card and then you take that belt off and tear his butt up, he gonna learn then. Lil Tay Tay ain't gonna do it no more. He ain't gonna, he ain't gonna hear from Lil Tay Tay no more. He, by stealing money, you gonna hear from Lil Tay Tay no more. But you gotta discipline him. You gotta whoop Lil Tay Tay, bro. Cause if you don't, Lil Tay Tay gonna whoop you. 